are learning and growing in your business, in your personal development, in all of the skills that you need for your business, because when you grow you, everything else will follow. And so give your guys, give yourself a pat on the back, a round of applause for being here because you are choosing to spend a few, an hour with us tonight. And we are so excited for that. And so I'm going to ask Maya to open us up in prayer to get us started. So Maya. Awesome. All right, my friends. Well, I just invite you right now to just breathe in hope, belief, and faith and vision with me as we just come before the Lord and pray over our time together. So God, we just come before you from literally all across the country, Lord united as a Mary Kay family. And so I just pray right now that you would just be exactly where we are, whether we are in our cars, at our kitchen tables, in our offices, in our basements, in our bedrooms, our closets, God, that wherever you have us, that we would just have full faith that you are right with us right now in this moment. I just pray over our evening of celebration, recognition, encouragement, and God, I just pray for a huge blessing over these women as they chose to be here on Labor Day where people could be, they could be anywhere, but they are here investing and growing their business. So Lord, I just pray that you bless their efforts, bless their commitment, bless their faith and their vision and their courage, God. And even if they're coming to this moment right here and they have doubts and fears and worries that you would just overwhelm their heart and their body and their mind with such a peace and such a um, step of boldness, God, that it would just light a fire. And just like Mary said, we've got four months left of 2022. And no matter where we are, that we could surrender what is happening in our lives and in our businesses. And we could just lay it at your feet and truly work with the talents that you have already given us. May this evening honor and glorify you. And uh, may we just have a great time together in your name. I pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maya. All right, you guys, well, we are going to get started with recognition. And so as I share my screen, I'm going to turn it over to Heidi to do the first part of our recognition. Well, welcome, you guys. Thanks for being on. And we get to celebrate all the new beauty consultants for last month and into our Mary Kay family. And I'm super excited to announce. <laughs> Sarah was recruited by Sherry. Welcome, Sarah. Beth, recruited by Francesca. Mackenzie, re recruited by Francesca. Natalie, recruited by Jennifer. And Felicia, recruited by Francesca. Welcome all of our new beauty consultants to our pink, pink area, our all-in area. Yay! Awesome, welcome everybody. All right, Sherry, you get to recognize our next Honey, oh, actually, yeah. do you want to talk about this first? Sorry. Yes. Okay. So you guys, uh, for our upcoming leadership, which I won't give away a surprise, but for leadership is going to be so exciting this year. And you're, you can help your sales director earn special uh, trips and um, not trips, what do they call them? Parties. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is one that's called the Power Unit Challenge. And so if you will be recognized, your unit will be recognized your sales director will be recognized starting at 50 non-T members all the way up to 125 plus. If you reach 125 plus non-T members, you get to be on stage recognition for uh, your sales director will for you and your unit. So I'm so excited. So, oh my gosh, you guys, we are stretching and stretching. Can't, can't wait. So every new T member counts. Uh, so we're just keep building, keep building. Absolutely. And I always love it because people always want to know how they can help their unit be recognized. And so that's why we wanted to share this with you guys here mm -hmm. during this, but always ask your director how you can help support the unit goals as you guys are moving forward, because that is, we love that as directors when, when people want to help us with that. So, all right, now Sherry, you are up. Hello. Can you guys hear me? I'm moving in my house yep. because um, my internet keeps going off, so I keep losing my Zoom. So I am trying to go downstairs where I have a little better reception so I can do the red jacket. Okay, so first of all, what is a red jacket? A red jacket is also known in Mary Kay as a star team builder. And that means that you have three or four active team members um, that, that are underneath of you, okay, that are on your team. And so star team builders that we have are Lisa Clark. She is our first one. She is from the Ray unit. 
And the next one is Angie Daughtery, and she is in my unit, the Mason unit. And then we have Jennifer Draper from the Huff unit. We also have Angie Emery from the Huff unit. Ooh, ladies. We also have Vicki Highsmith, who is from the Mary Pilot unit. And Laura Newson from the Hull unit. Congratulations, Laura. Okay, I'm turning my pages here, you guys. I'm trying to hold this, turn my pages. Uh, next, we have Amy Parnell from the Pyatt unit. Way to go, Amy. Okay, then we have Kayla Kirkman Gert from the Smith unit. Way to go, Kayla. Okay, elite team leader. So to be an elite team leader, that means you have five to seven active team members in your, in your group. So this position is open. So who is going to be the next person in this elite team leader position? I cannot wait to see. We have a lot of red jackets. So it'd be awesome to see like lots of pages of elite team leaders um, on our next call. So, okay. Director in qualification. So director in qualification is not really a step on the career path, but it is a qualification period where you go from being in a red jacket to turning into a sales director, okay? So you start that with, with 10 um, active team members and you go up to 30 active team members um, over this qualification period. So make this your goal because we found out that for leadership in January, DIQs are going to be invited. And that does not normally happen. That does not happen. So it's super exciting that DIQs are going to get to go because you guys, I was a DIQ last January. I didn't get to go. So I'm ex super excited that if you're in that role that you get to go with us. So put that on your to-do list. <laughs> okay. If you are a red jacket, so this gives you a goal for September. We have moved the date. So it's on the third Thursday of each month at eight o'clock central time. And it's on the same Zoom that you're on for um, tonight. And that is if you are in any red jacket. So anything, three active team members and above, you are invited to be on this call. And you want to make sure you are part of this. The education is fantastic. You know, you get lots of good training and recognition. And it's so fun be because you are with the leaders that are in our area. And so it's, you know, Mary Kay always said to, you know, surround yourself with the people that you want to be like, um, and this is a chance to do that. So join us for the Red Hot Call. And we also have a promotion that you can help your director. So, so your director is going to be recognized at the leadership conference in January if she has three or more first time reds. So if you guys want to help out your director, we would love for you to help us um, to get three or more active team members between July 1st and December 31st. We get that on our team. Sorry. We get three red jackets on our, in our unit. We get to receive onstage recognition. So become a red jacket, get all the benefits of being a red jacket and help your director. Absolutely. Help us help you help us help you. We like, we all, it's an all win situation. So awesome. All right. Well, I think we get to do, um, a little bit of recognition with this with Jennifer in explaining the court of sharing. So Jennifer. Absolutely. Yes. So the court of sharing is very near and dear to my heart, as I believe um, what Mary Kay Ash asked us to do was to pass it on. And that's how you accomplish the court of sharing. And you can choose a diamond bumblebee for your jacket. You can choose it for a bracelet or you can take cash. But let me tell you, you want the diamond bumblebee. I'll just say that. <clears throat> so how do you achieve the court of sharing, the national court of sharing? Well, you do this when you add 24 Great Start qualified team members to your personal team throughout the entire seminar year. My friends, that's only two a month. And guess what? If you haven't done it yet, okay, that's only six. You only got these six by the end of September and you're on target, as they call it. And so what is Great Start qualified? That is when your new team member, either her initial order or her orders accumulate to 600 wholesale in her first four months. And you get a cash bonus as a thank you for the company for helping your team member start her business. And then you start working to earn the national court is sharing. And so we don't have anyone on this list just yet, but I know we will after this month. Um, and then you will be, it'll be listed in rank of how many great start qualified team members you have. And if, if there is a tie, then we'll go off the commissions you have earned. And that will be our ranking as we start showing you all on our national court of sharing list. Yes. 
Yes, awesome. And I know Jennifer will be sharing a little bit later, a little tool to help you as you are building your team this month as well. So, all right, we are moving on to our golden rules achievers. So Sherry, I think this is you again. Okay. So on the golden rules, if you haven't figured it out by now, golden rules took the place of the pink, all of our pink stuff from last year. So this year we are golden. That is our theme for the year. And for August, you could earn this gorgeous heart necklace um, when you placed your $600 wholesale order in August. Okay. And so the achievers for that are Lisa Clark, Sarah Coker, Angie Daughtry, Jennifer Draper, Dory Eads, Sally Ellis, Amy England, Don Harden, uh, Robin Lichtenauer, Cherish Miller, Lauren Nixon, Taylor Olson, Bobby Joe Smith, and Francesca Whaley. You guys, that's awesome. What a way to start out our year. And when you are doing your 600 every month and staying consistent, the company rewards you. You get a six month consistency challenge award and you also get a year long consistency award. So if you don't miss um, hitting your 600 wholesale order and being a golden achiever every single month, you will receive this gorgeous set that's on the screen here, the earrings and the bracelet. Um, you'll receive that just for being consistent, just, just for doing what um, the company asks us to do. So it's an extra set of jewelry, extra um, nice new uh, addition to your uh, jewelry that you can wear to seminar next year. Absolutely. All right. Then we were moving on up from the consistency work of doing the 600 each month on to our star consultants. So hi. Oh, actually, I forgot about this. Sherry, do you want to talk? I forget what my own slides are. How about that? This is so <laughs> cute, y'all. I'm excited because, you know, normally our prizes that we get are generally earrings or a bracelet or a necklace. And this is such a cute little, um, like wristlet that you can put your keys on or whatever. Uh, and it has the, the um, sparkly little gold heart down at the bottom. Then it has the colorful um, wristlet part to it. So this is so cute. And this is what you can earn for September for being a golden achiever. So excited for this. Like so excited to get my hands on that. All right, now let's move on to Heidi to talk about our star consultant. Awesome. So when you guys are a golden achiever, guess what? That leads right into star consultant. So if you're tracking that 600 every month, then you will reach your star consultant by default, which is awesome. So um, I love the star consultant program. Uh, this year, you, you can roll over your points and you can accumulate them all year long. And so, and go shopping with your star points. And now we want to recognize all of our star consultants and if you have never earned a star let that be your goal to be a star because i'm going to tell you why how you can help your sales director in a minute but not only that but because being a star is awesome you guys and that was as a beauty consultant i had been in my red jacket for several years and every quarter I would not finish without a star, you guys. Even on the quarters that I just almost didn't make it, I found a way to be a star every quarter. So that that's your goal, is be a star. So on target with 1650 wholesale or above, we have Jennifer Draper and Cherish Miller. Congratulations. Okay, now those who have already achieved star consultant status, and by the way, you have until September, 15th at midnight okay um we already have sapphire which is 1800 we have laura newsome robin lickenmeyer we have bonnie masoner congratulations i don't think we have any um ruby or diamond is that correct but then moving on up we have emerald with francesca whaley way to go and pearl we have amy england that's the highest you guys so congratulations amy congratulations all of you stars no matter where you are you can finish star within the next few days guys the next what week or so that we have left uh we have a little over a week so okay. like 10 days so you guys can do that in 10 days i promise okay so how you can help your director is stars get invited to the stars and guitars leadership party yes and vip early access so we need 15 unit stars and everybody count can count as two stars towards that recognition so your sales director has to be a star both quarters and she has to have a total of 15 stars between this quarter and the next quarter so guys if you don't know how many stars your unit has reach out to your sales director and say how many more do we need to finish 
finish uh, your your star consultant stars and guitars leadership party. So way to go, guys! Woohoo! Awesome, awesome. All right, and then up next for Court of Sales is Maya. Hey everyone. Well, as you guys see, Mary Kay is so smart and so strategic about the programs that they put in place to help you succeed. And you guys, ultimately, one of the biggest reasons I know many of us started Mary Kay was not only to save money on our Mary Kay product, but to make money. And you know what? I want to tell y'all, it is okay to be proud about making money with your Mary Kay business. Did y'all know that the average American, if they have a $400 emergency, cannot even pay for it. But as Mary Kay beauty consultants, we all have the ability to make some cash. So one of the big ways you can get recognized is with our court of sales. When you do 40,000 in retail sales in one single calendar year. So we want to recognize our consultants who are on their way to earning this prestigious level. So number 10, Bobby Joe. Number nine, Jennifer. Number eight, Taylor. Number seven, Cherish. Number six, Laura. Moving up to our top five, everyone. Woo! Number five is Angela. Number four is Bonnie. Number three is Robin. Number two is Amy and number one with 8,822 retail is Francesca Whaley. Woo! Congratulations. Let me see some hearts and some snaps and some confetti on your guys' little emojis. I do want to tell y'all, this is retail. Okay, so this is not wholesale. Wholesale is our discount. Retail is what the product is worth, you guys. So every time you order a dollar, you get $2 retail. So if you hit that 600, you get 1200 towards your retail. Okay, and so huge congratulations to our top 10 of our area so far. Absolutely. All right, then I want to come in here and do a little bit of quick director recognition for you guys as units as a whole. We've talked a lot about how we like to, you know, help each other win and help each other be successful. And I know how important it is to you guys as consultants to be a part of your unit, supporting your sales director and all the things that they are going towards. And so one of the things that I want to recognize this month for our directors is those that are adding new consultants. Now you saw, we welcomed five new consultants to our units in the month of August. So I wanna give a shout out to those directors leading their units with recruiting this month, because you guys, this is just the beginning, okay? This is where all of the magic happens. This is where all of the excitement comes from is again, as you heard, as we add new women and they are helping directors and units reach that unit size challenge and then becoming red jackets. And then all like all of the things start when, like Jennifer said, when we do what Mary Kay Ash asked us to do and pass it on. So for the units for the month of August in unit recruiting, let's give a shout out to the Jennifer Huff unit, adding one new to their unit and to the Sherry Mason unit for adding one new. And our number one unit in recruiting, the Heidi Ray unit with three new team members added to their unit this month. We are so excited, you guys. And like I said, this is just the beginning. This is that first step towards it. And I wanna share with you guys a little bit as to where the big picture goes as we are talking about this is because we are looking to grow our area. And this starts with you guys. It starts with every single consultant passing it on. Can you imagine if every single consultant in our units listening, watching on this Zoom tonight, if you just passed it on to one person this month, how much of an impact that would have, not just on your life, but on their life, how much of an impact that would have on your unit and then on our future area as we are looking to double our area size this month. And so I know we're going to hear a little bit about a way to help you with that. And I challenge each of us to think that thought as to what we can do this month to really grow and to pass on what Mary Kate asked us. And we kind of made this a little bit of a fun way as well. Okay is that we're looking to double stuff our area, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and so when we talked about doubling, you know, of course you think of like double mint gum, but we like to double stuff Oreos a little bit better. So we're going with the Oreo theme for this. And so we are looking to double stuff our future area. Double 
our units with new consultants, double stuff our units with red jackets, and then growing our area with new directors as well. So as you can see on here, we have six sales directors right now in our future family, and we are looking to double that to 12. And we have on here eight current red jackets, and we are looking to more than double that to 20 as we finish out this seminar year. And so we would love for you to be a part of that with, again, passing on this opportunity, sharing this with the women that you have in your customer base, in your life, especially as we gear up for the holidays, helping women make some extra money for the holidays as they are looking to add something fun and exciting to their life as well. And imagine again, like I said, if every single one of us passed it on, what an amazing trickle down effect that would lead for us, for our teams, our units, and our future area as well. So there you go with that. Now we're going to go back to Jennifer for announcements, sharing some things from the company and some future things that we're doing as well. So Jennifer, are you ready, my friend? I am. Awesome. Okay. We're just going with what, I guess, well, you have the slide as well. So yeah, I've, I've got them in order pulled up here. So I'll just, I'll just go until you tell me to stop. <laughs> All right. So this, oh my goodness, when the company announced this a few days ago, I got so excited because who here loves our Sonic Fresh? I mean, I think we all can say that we love our Sonic Fresh so much and it is a gift for new consultants in the month of September when they place their first order, their first active order of at least 225. So this, the specific details for this is their beauty agreement is in September and their order can be in September or October, okay? Because we understand sometimes they join the last few days of the month, they need a little bit extra time to um, be able to get their order put in. So any any consult, new consultants that order in October, they will receive this as well. And I'm actually working, here's an idea for you guys. If you have a customer and she's thinking about being a consultant and if she already has a Sonic Brush, this is what I'm working on with a potential new team member right now. She already has a Sonic Brush and she loves it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the one from the company and use it as a giveaway promotion for everyone who joins her grand opening or places an order and they can earn entries to win a Sonic Brush. And I don't have to give it away. She doesn't have to give it away. The company is already giving it to her. And so she just gets to pass it on to someone else and you know they can earn some extra entries. So um, this is a great welcome gift. So excited for this. And the new consultants can join at $30 or 130, either sign up option. All right, our next announcement is we can order holiday products, which I'm so excited for. Like, I just put on the new pomegranate satin hand cream, like, on my hands. I am wearing one of our new lip colors tonight. Like, these are so fun. Um, like, and we can't wait for you guys. I figured Maya had one on, too. I've tried that on. Ooh, I do not look very pretty in that color, but I'm a neutral girl, so I like the neutral package. Um, but these lip colors are so fun. They have, like, a doe foot applicator, if you guys can see that there. And so they just glide on super smooth, a little bit of shine. And oh, you guys are going to love, 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 love our holiday products. So I'm not going to tell you all the details. I know we've been talking about them in our units. We have opportunities for you to get to try them before you buy them and earn them and all of that. But if you were a star consultant last quarter or enrolled your customers in the preferred customer program, you will get to order these products on the 10th, which is in just five days. And everyone else gets to order in 10 days, which if you remember, your star consultant deadline is September 15th. Mary Kay does this so you can actually order and invest in holiday products and finish your star in the same day. So, so excited for everyone to get to order their holiday products. All right, next up, we still have going on the Uniquely Hue Makeover Challenge with our gorgeous fall palette. And so it can be with this palette or it can be with any of our other Mary Kay colors too, but who doesn't want to try these gorgeous fall colors? And so all you have to do is get together with the customer. They try some products, whether it's the palette or our other glamour colors, and then they submit a photo and tell in the caption why their look is unique to them and they're entered into win a thousand dollars. And so are you as their beauty consultant. And so I know our unit has been um, issued a challenge of a hundred makeovers in the month of September together. And I'm sure your unit is working towards something too. Like it's so exciting when the company gives the promotion, we run with it and we get excited about it. You can get new sales, new team members, all the above just by having a simple makeover. Okay. Next announcement is do, 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 do. Yes, our 600 wholesale for the month. You can receive this gorgeous wristlet, which Sherry talked about. So excited to receive that. 
And then next up, we have our consistency challenge. And I did put it in the chat in case you missed it. New consultants can earn this piece of jewelry as well. Usually they do up until I think February or March. Any new consultant, if they're the month after they join, they hit 600 every month, they are considered on target and consistent to earn this piece of jewelry as well. So it's not just for those of us who were consultants when the year started. It's also for those who join our teams as well throughout the year. All right, next announcement is leadership, which we did hear a little bit about earlier. The DIQs are invited to join us in Nashville. So we are the second round of um, leadership conference. So the dates there are January 18th through the 21st. And so you would be invited to come and be with us and to experience what it is like. Usually, like Sherry said, it's just for directors. But this year, DIQs, when you have 10 active team members by December 31st, which is my birthday. So Y'all can just celebrate my birthday and submit for DIQ at the end of the year. All right. Our next announcement is bingo. Oh, so many wonderful announcements tonight. So if you have not participated yet, don't worry. Super simple. Your director has scripts. All you have to do is invite some friends. They pick five numbers between one and 15, and we give away three prizes every single Wednesday night. This does take place in our online virtual beauty group. Formerly, we call it Watch It Wednesday, which still is Watch It Wednesday, but we're playing bingo. And there's a brand new bingo board coming this Wednesday night featuring our new holiday products. This is a great opportunity for you to get your customers learning more about the holiday products, and then they can pre-order from you before you get to order either the 10th or the 15th. Our next announcement is for Forever Fall Retreat. This is kind of like a mini seminar. It's in the middle of our, our seminar year, and it is in French Lake, Indiana. And so if you have not registered for this, I would encourage you to do so quickly because if they sell out, they sell out and space is limited. The special guest is National Sales Director Emeriti Jeannie Martin, and she will light a fire in your soul. She is amazing. She tells you how it is. And there's training, there's recognition, there's on stage recognition for you as consultants, for units. Like it is an amazing couple of days to just kind of give you that extra recharge to get through the end of the year and then to kick off, you know, once January gets here, our, our second, you know, new year in Mary Kay. So I would encourage you to participate in this if you all possibly can. All right, let's see, do we have any more announcements? Oh, I think we're ready for training, which is Maya tonight. Yay! Well, hey, 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 everyone. Well, everyone just take a deep breath in and release all the excitement, all the recognition. I am thrilled to come to you guys tonight and to share with you guys what I believe has been such a huge impact in growing a long-term successful business, how to grow a supportive spouse in my business, how to empower and raise my children, and also create just a really great environment for um, our Mary Kay family. So um, hold on, guys. Sorry, the light in my studio is... Um, uh, it's motion censored. So I apologize. It, there we go. Okay. So anyway, well, you would think it would stay on because I talk with my hands all the time, but tonight we are continuing a series all about learning yourself. Okay. Now you might be like hopping on here and being like, um, aren't we supposed to be learning about like booking and coaching and selling and team building and all of those things? Absolutely. And you do your sales director. I know provides so many amazing training opportunities on all of those categories. What I have come to find is that when I invest in how to grow my confidence, how to grow my faith, how to grow relationships, it is going to dramatically impact the success of my business. Because if I can build, maintain, create really powerful relationships in my business, it is going to create a lot of joy, a lot of fun. And I believe what Mary Kay always intended, the ability to empower other women in the process. And so tonight we are talking all about the five love languages. Okay. The five love languages are ways that you can express and receive love, not just from your spouse, but you can also feel this in friendships, your work environment, um, your children, you know. And so while this was made um, probably when I was born, um, it has now transpired in how to create an environment where people feel loved, seen, and appreciated. So I want you to go ahead and like put it in the comment right now. When do you feel the most loved? 
or how do you feel the most loved? Whether it's your significant other, maybe it's your recruiter or your sales director, or a good friend does something for you or says something. I would just, I'm curious to hear, when do you feel the most loved? Because like I said, this is how you feel seen, loved, and appreciated. It really is going to speak to your heart. Okay, so there are actually five different languages of love. Okay, and like I said, well, yes, of course, this could apply to your spouse. I just want you to listen to all this because it will show you how you can work with your customers, how you can work with your team, and how you can build your own leadership skills. So the first one is words of affirmation. Words of affirmation is about expressing affection through the spoken word, praise, or appreciation. Okay, so that is what words of affirmation is this spoken word. Number two is quality time. Someone with this love language wants undivided attention. They feel the most loved when you are present and focused on them when you are together. Number three, a person with physical touch as the, excuse me, sorry, physical touch is number three. So a person with physical touch as their primary love language feels love through physical affection. That doesn't necessarily be intimate, but it could be a hug, touching of the arm, a hand holding, um, someone like putting their hand on your shoulder um, or something like that. Or at the end of the day, just cuddling with your significant other. Maybe you notice this with your child. You may have a child that just loves to be held. They don't need any words, but they love to be held. At the end of the day, there might be that friend in your life who you know, if you go to her house, you are not leaving without a hug. Like that's right. Like that's just gonna be her. Okay. Um, words of affirmation, quality time, physical touch. Number four is acts of service. Acts of service are nice things to do for your partner or friend to make them feel loved and appreciated. All right, and we'll get into more details in just a second. I forgot to say, say that. I wanted to give you guys a quick overview and then I'm gonna really go through what to do, what not to do, things you can implement and so forth. Okay, so acts of service, uh, nice things you do for that person. Okay, they notice and appreciate little things that you do for them, okay? Then the last one is receiving gifts. For someone who uses and responds to this love language, gift giving indicates love and affection. They treasure not only the gift itself, but also the time and effort someone used to, you know, the effort the gift giver put into it, okay? It's not necessarily that they expect big gifts or anything like that, but it's the thought that went behind the gift, okay? So, okay. Those are the five love languages. So I wanna make sure you guys have those so far, words of affirmation, quality time, physical touch, acts of service, and receiving gifts. So you're probably wondering, well, how do you know what's mine, right? Like, how do I know what my love language is? So I'm gonna ask you a series of questions and I would love for you to identify like which one sticks out to you. Okay, when someone says, I love you or verbally praises you in front of other people that fills your cup. Okay. Um, how many of you love a surprise of a meaningful, well thought out gift? How many of you love it when someone surprises a trip for you and you didn't have to plan any of it? Maybe someone who runs the errands, does the laundry, does the vacuuming and the dishes, cooks dinner, or will take the kids here and there or will help do something um, above and beyond what was asked of, of them to do. Maybe you love your hand being held when you're walking, or you are that person who you know if you go anywhere, everyone's getting a hug around you, okay? So answering these questions could possibly give you a hint as to what your love language is. Jordan jokes with me and tells me I'm a little bit of all of them. <laughs> Now you might be more than one. You might even have a different love language per different people, right? Like how I express and receive love from my husband, it's going to probably be a little bit different than how I express and receive love with you guys. However, you're going to notice a more dominant love language. Okay. So here's something that is really important to understand is usually people in your life 
have different love languages than you, right? How many of you have noticed when you think about your spouse, maybe your spouse, maybe your children, maybe your close coworkers, they may speak and receive love differently from you. And this is what inspired Gary Chapman, the author of the five love languages, as he was doing lots of marital counseling and premarital counseling that he noticed a lot of conflict that was coming in relationships was not that that person wasn't attempting to do something, they were attempting to love on that person in a different language, okay, in a different language. So which can lead to misunderstandings, right? And so if you ever look at quarrels or arguments or any conflict, a lot of time it could be because that person is not getting the love that they need in their love language. So ultimately the goal is to number one, identify your love language, so you know how you can receive love. So, okay, um, guys, one of mine is words of affirmation. I love words. It speaks to my heart more than anything. Um, and my husband is not really a words kind of guy. Okay. So he is acts of service. That man will do anything for me and I love it, but I love him to tell me that I look gorgeous. I love him to tell me that I look beautiful and he doesn't, and it's not that he doesn't do it y'all, but I had to learn that just, just was not the way that he loved me or, um, you know, even that's just a small example. Okay. So, okay. We're going to keep going. Cause I've got so much good information and I want to make sure I get through all of it. Cause it's going to blow your mind. Okay. So here is actually something that I learned that I thought was really powerful is how does love language actually benefit you? So here I'm talking about love language. It might sound kind of silly. It might seem kind of whatever, but how does it actually play a huge impact? Not only in your family relationships, your co-working relationships, because think about it, guys, our business is very relational. Would you all not agree? And I'm going to joke with you guys and say, if you don't like getting to know people, and if you don't like building relationships, this business probably isn't going to be for you because our business really is about building relationships and empowering people. So number one, how does love language benefit your relationships? It promotes selflessness. This kind of like rocked me to my core, you guys, because as I was reading this, I was like, Ooh, you're right. Because if I know that Jordan's love languages is acts of service and, um, I know his love language is also, um, quality time. Like he loves for me to sit next to him and watch football. And I think that is the most ridiculous thing. And I know that the next four months of my life is going to be a lot about football, but it means the world to him. It requires me to be selflessness. Uh, or selfless, right? Like it requires me to be selfless. So therefore it really helps me focus on the needs of others. It helps me focus on the needs of others. So when I look at my customer base and I'm like, okay, you know what? They may not need recognition every time they make an order, but you know what does important is there might be a customer of mine who wants to be recognized for their order. And so I want to recognize them for that because that might speak one of my customers love language or one of my customers might say, you know what, that service of you coming to my home and delivering my product in 24, 48 hours that may speak her love language, therefore develop a really good relationship with her. Um, or you may have a customer, right? Like, um, who loves words and that you may not be the person who loves a lot of words, but every single time you drop off product to them, that product delivery takes about 30 to 40 minutes because they love words. But do y'all see if that's not something that's your jam, how it creates selflessness and your people will fill their cup filled up when you really present giving other people the love language because you realize, okay, I'm going to put their need above my own. Even if it might be a little bit annoying or a little bit inconvenient, it is teaching me how to be selfless, right? This kind of like rocked my world because I was like, whoo, this is really teaching me how to love on people the way they need to be loved before I am expecting them to love me first. Okay. Number two of why love languages will benefit you. It creates empathy. It creates empathy. Now, the older I get, I feel like the more empathetic I get anyway, because you live life, right? You just become more empathetic. 
However, when you learn more about the people in your life that you care about and you love, you learn to empathize with them. So if someone you care about, right, go ahead and write right now and write down five to 10 people that you love to death. And, you know, of course it's going to be my husband and my kids. I put our Mary Kay family on there. I've got my small group on there, but if you were to write down the actual five to 10 names of women that, and people in your life that you love, you're probably going to notice some of those people are from our Mary Kay family, right? That you've talked to a lot. And so, but if I learn to empathize with them, once again, it takes me to come at it from their perspective. And instead of saying something like, well, I wish they would do this for me or that for me, instead of worrying about my own love language, I can give them their love language in the way that speaks to their heart or speaks to them, you know, and making sure that they feel seen and heard. Cause that's ultimately the goal here, right? To be loved is you are seen, you are heard, heard, you are valued and you know, you're appreciated, right? Okay. Number three benefit is it helps maintain intimacy. And of course you guys, into, into, intimacy is not always physical. Intim, intimacy to me is a heart connection, right? And if you can be intimate in the sense, and, and this part particularly, I think about building a team, right? Like if I can build an intimate relationship with my team in a professional matter, they build trust, right? They believe you, they're going to follow you. Um, they're going to want to go where you go. And I think that's what makes people feel safe and secure, right? Especially as you're building team. But like I said, it just really allows people once again, to feel loved, respected, seen, and heard. Okay. So those, um, okay, we've got two more. The next one is it aids personal growth guys. This is huge. And I'm going to say it allows you to not take everything so offensive. Okay. Because when you know how you are loved and you can identify, wow, they just, you can look at someone and say either they're missing it or not understanding it. That is a personal growth issue as opposed to being a vain issue. Right. And so once again, to kind of look outside yourself. And I think that's really important. I also believe this helps you identify to communicate to the people you love. Hey, I miss this, or I'm looking for this in our relationship. Like it means a lot to me when you speak to me, words of affirmation. And, um, it means a lot to me when you take time to write me a note. Like, um, I think every note I've ever gotten is like in, like in a bag over here. Cause I cannot throw them away because they are words that mean the world to me. And it's funny because on days where I just kind of feel less than sometimes I pull them out and I read them because it makes me feel better. And, um, that's just a small way that I'll use a, a, my love language to kind of be, like feed my heart again. And um, yes, the few notes that I have from Jordan are also safe. Like they're not going <laughs> anywhere. Um, but anyway, it helps your personal growth, you guys. Um, finally, the last benefit is it does help you share love in actual meaningful ways. Have you ever felt like you've done something for someone and it didn't matter? Like they didn't take it as good. And you're like crushed because you like spent your heart and soul trying to like love this person, encourage this person, support this person. And you totally miss the boat. Has anyone ever felt that way? Like I said, this is why if you were to look at the top 10, 10, 15 relationships in your life. And if you were to not only know your love language, but to also know theirs, you would know how to love them in a way that grows that relationship, supports that relationship. and also strategically prevents you from doing things that would intentionally hurt them. Okay. So here is what we're going to do. We, I, in my very quickest way, I wanted to go through every single love language, the do's, the don'ts and ways to grow each love language. Okay. So you guys can kind of get some actual examples because the more I was reading this, the more I was researching, um, you can get the um, there's podcasts, video, YouTube videos, there's the book, there's the, all this stuff. I was fascinated, like truly fascinated. And you guys, Jordan and I have been teaching love languages and learning about love languages since before we got married. And so it's actually even part of the curriculum we do in our premarital counseling and for couples who are, you know, are getting married. So, okay, let's start with words of affirmation. Um, actions speak louder than words, except if you are a words girl, right? 
So this person is someone who pays, places a lot of importance on the verbal and written word. Your words will speak volumes to them, even if um, it's simple phrases like, I see you today, I saw how you did that, I appreciate you, I love how you blank. Okay, so affirming something out loud that they did, okay? They're gonna appreciate compliments, heartfelt thank yous, handwritten notes, hearing how they mean something to you. And the goal here is to let this person know how much they mean to you, okay? So these words give love, appreciation, respect, okay? And um, what's also really important about this that I, I, I didn't think about is this person is so encouraged when they hear another person speaking like a compliment about them, like, like a roundabout way, like it's going to really encourage them. That's just going to lift up their heart. Um, they appreciate those phone calls. And, and like I said, um, a handwritten note, like even a note is really important. Okay. People who give words of affirmation. So maybe, you know, someone like this in your life, they tend to notice details about someone's life. They will be the first one to notice a new haircut or a new hairstyle, um, and they're going to compliment people. They usually are very generous with good and positive things that they see in other people. Um, they remember to ask about uh, their sick dog or their son's game or, you know, their words um, are all of that. Okay. And um, they're also very sensitive to other words being spoken about other people. So you'll probably notice that this person may not do, this person will be very cognizant about not a positive conversation, okay? They, they may be one who may be quiet when the conversation is not as positive um, or, um, and hoping that they can turn the conversation to be more optimistic and hopeful, okay? So, let me give you some examples. Everything is better when you're here. I appreciate it when you do. I couldn't do this without you. I really love the new outfit. It looks great on, on you. I'm so lucky to be with you. I'm so thankful to have you in my life. It impressed me when you did blank. You're doing such a great job. I'm really proud of you. You're one of my favorite people to be around. You're special to me. Your support means so much. You're an inspiration. Okay, so those are some really good examples. Okay, um, here are a couple of don'ts, okay? Um, here, okay, hold on, sorry. Actually, hold on, I wanna share with you guys some really good quick tips. Be authentic, be empathetic, show appreciation, say I love you a lot, and I'm gonna be the one that says, I, know, I feel like I tell my friends I love them. And that might seem weird to you guys, but I, I say I love you almost at the end of every conversation. I'm like, they probably think I'm so weird, but it's true. So I love you a lot, mail them a note, post a note, give them a shout out, point out their strengths um, and just dial up all of those words a lot. So, okay, what to avoid. People with this love language find words to be extremely powerful. They are very sensitive to negative words and comments and criticisms. In fact, one harsh word can send this person into just a very bad spiral, like a, a bad comment, a bad review. So like for this reason, people whose primary love language is words of affirmation are often extremely wounded by gaslighting, narcissism, ex emotional abuse, negative words, accusations, and criticisms that dagger their heart. So, um, Obviously, here are some things to avoid. Um, don't assume there's a perfect quote for every one of life's situations. Don't be mean or harmful with your words. They take them to heart. Don't be overly critical or condescending. Um, they interpret this as saying that they're dumb. Don't make fun of them or tease them too intensely because they are sensitive. Don't try to manipulate words. Don't try to take shortcuts in expressing love to them. They can tell you're faking it. And don't withhold kind words as punishment. Oof. Okay. So that is our words of affirmation. Okay. Now let's move to quality time. Quality time 
is when you're with your partner, you put down the cell phone, you turn off the tablet and you focus only on them. They are the center of your attention. They want, they, they, especially today, they ultimately don't want any distractions. They want to be next to you knowing that like you are there, you are present, you are totally right there with them. Okay. So if your primary, if your relationship with this person, you need to set out intentional time with that person. Um, this might seem a little unnatural because some of you might think, oh, I'm spending them by running this or doing this or doing this with them. But this person wants eye contact. Okay. This is the gateway for a quality time person. Maintaining eye contact with them will tell them that you feel they feel loved and important and understood. It also communicates that you are listening to what they have to say. Okay. So making eye contact. <clears throat> the next one is using active listening skills. So active listening skills. What does that look like? You focus on what they're saying. You lean in slightly. You affirm what they're saying. So that might seem something like, so I heard you say this because it shows that quality time person that you are actually listening to what they're saying. You ask thoughtful questions. You avoid offering advice. This was actually something I did not know. Avoid offering advice unless they ask for it. Trying to put yourself in their shoes and thinking about how you might feel in the same situation. So those are all examples of active listening. So almost like jumping into their, where they are in this moment, in this conversation, whatever you guys are doing. Okay. The next thing to do with a quality time person is to set limits on technology. Nothing hurts a quality time person more than to share something they feel is really important. And then to look up and realize that that person is on their phone. Okay. Maybe they're answering an email or a coworker and whether you are a quality time person or not, I feel like all of us feel this, right? Like it, 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 it can hurt. So I thought that was really um, powerful. The third thing that I learned about this that I thought was interesting was focus on the quality, not the quantity. So your quality time person, just, it doesn't mean that you have to spend all the time together. This was actually something that I and this was a myth that I thought quality time means you have to spend every waking moment together. They have to be together a lot, but it's not that they have to be together all the time with you. It's that when they are with you, they want there to be very intentional and very on purpose. Okay. So even if it's a few minutes, okay. And I, even if it's just a couple minutes of very meaningful moments, so with someone who's a quality time person, and if I know that that's their love language, and if I know I cannot give them my full attention, I will say something like, I know that right now I cannot give you my full attention. When in the next two or three days, could we have a time where you have a hundred percent of my attention? Because I want to be able to do that. So that way, once again, that person who's a quality time person can feel seen, loved, and heard. And they know that I'm not trying to do multiple things at one time. Okay make a plan. Now, while this person it never hurts to be spontaneous, right? Something surprising is always really fun. This also, this person, um, really likes, um, trying something new with the person they love. Okay. So this prevents from them getting into a rut that's boring. Um, so whether it's trying a new restaurant in town, scheduling a bike ride on Saturday morning, planning a leisurely walk around your neighborhood, um, remember just spending time together is expected when people have been together a while doesn't mean you cannot also be intentional about the time you're spending with them. Right. So basically, um, make an intentional plan to spend with that person. Okay. Um, and that person who's quality time loves that plan because they can look forward to knowing that they're not going to be distracted or you're not going to be distracted. They know, oh my gosh, I have this time carved out with this person that I care about and I need that. Um, okay. So develop a routine of connecting with your person who's quality time. So whether it's, um, you know, praying or meditating every morning, or, um, you take a small lunch date every week or, um, something that you both can look forward to together.
And we've kind of already said this, but be present and available. Okay, so here are some common mistakes that people make when they're working with the quality time person. Okay, don't complain about the time you spend together. Right, I know I just joked about football. I know now 10 years into my marriage that I don't joke about it. And while there are times that I don't necessarily wanna do it, I know now to tell Jordan, I know this is important to you. So I'm gonna do this because I know this is important to you. And it means a lot to you, right? Resist the urge to do something else when that person is with you, no matter what it takes. So if that means turning off notifications, if that means going somewhere secluded. So, you, so like, for instance, while shopping is really fun, a quality time person may not like shopping because they don't have your direct like attention. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, and ask that person, what do you need in order to feel loved? What do you need? Like, what kind of time, what would you like to do with our time together? Again, they would, they usually like to tell you. Okay. Um, like I said, when it comes to love language of quality time, most people assume that it means spending a lot of time together or going out a lot, out a lot. But like I said, that's not the case. It is quality over quantity. So a loving partner who craves quality time actually has very little to do with the amount of time that you are together, with the quality of time that you are together. Okay. So that is our quality time person. Next is physical touch. Like I said, this does not mean <laughs> that it has to be in an intimate way. You guys, did you all know that there are so many physical ways of expressing love, even in your facial expressions, right? Like even in your facial expressions, okay? So a hug, a shoulder squeeze, a handhold, a pat on the back, a clap. There are so many ways to give and receive physical touch, okay, um, both physically and mentally. So while this might seem self-explanatory, like I said, a lot of physical touch communication can also come from your face, um, which I know is really good. So here are some, here are some examples from kissing, holding hands, um, cuddling, skin-to-skin -skin touching. Those are obviously physical ways. Then there's none. Um, non-intimate ways of touch, rubbing your partner's back, sitting side by side, tickling, um, which I consider a physical way, which I thought was funny, um, and so forth, and being able to connect in that way. So let me give you guys an example. My little sister, Faith, is a huge physical touch person, and I know every single time I'm with her or um, around her, and so is my mom. Like, oh my gosh, no person who's ever met my mom is not, not going to get a hug. Like, that's just who my mom is, and she hugs everybody. Like, some of you might think I hug everybody and my mom takes it to a whole nother level. Like that is just her love language. But even when I go out with faith or if we're in the car together, she like grabs my hand. Granted, we are sisters, right? So like we have that, but she loves to be touched, like loves to be touched. My Kenna, my second child, she is a cuddler. Like holy cow, she wants to be cuddled to sleep. She likes to be cuddled when she wakes up. She likes to touch me when she's eating. She like, I, and I, for the longest time, I don't want to say the longest time, she's only six, but I would be annoyed that she always had to touch me. And then I realized that was her way of expressing that I, she felt loved, she felt safe, she felt seen and all of those ways. And so obviously there's not, that's it's not a lot of explanation on that, but you know, one of the things that obviously you can see from this is um, it's important that whether that's watching a movie and holding hands, wrapping, hugging and embracing that person, um, a sweet kiss on the cheek or something like that. Um, all of those simple acts of touch can show someone that you love them. Okay. So, okay. All right. Acts of service. Okay. If you are the person who has um, identified yourself as acts of service, you are going to notice that you love to do things for people like filling up your gas, your gas tank, watering plants, cooking a meal, prep, laying out their clothes, bringing a meal for them. Right. Okay. So here are some things you are going to want to do or notice about this person. They pay attention to small things. So they notice how many, uh, how much cream are you like in your coffee? They know how many cups of sugar or things of sugar. Um, they're going to notice what shows you love. They're going to notice where, what kind of 
um, jewelry you like, right? Um, they're also going to pay attention to your calendar and they might make your coffee for you in the morning and it's ready for you. Okay. Um, you might be the one who creates, um, things for other people without even having to be asked because that's just the person that you are. Right. So, um, here is what is, um, okay. Hold on. Making sure. I... Okay. So if you are the person with acts of service, it is important for you to be patient with the, the people in your life who are not, because you may feel like you do everything for everyone and nobody cares. Um, and actually on reports, acts of service was actually the lowest love language utilized the most. Okay, um, words of, I forgot to say this, words of affirmation was number one, and we're kind of going in the order of highest to lowest, I forgot to say that. So acts of service is on the lower end. Um, okay, so this person um, might feel frustrated or annoyed if their significant other or people in their life aren't ever helping them with all of the things that need to get done around the house which obviously therefore can create tension because you might say things like, oh, you never help me or you don't ever do anything to help the family or the kids or um, that that just may not be their love language, but you can take it really personal that people are not physically helping you do something, okay? So as you can see, that one is also, um, so this, the key to using this is communicating that you need something. A lot of people with this gift assume that a need can be seen and it will automatically get done, okay? And this is something that um, based on Gary Chapman's research and all of this is when you communicate, hey, I need help with this, this, and this, it actually helps a lot of people because a lot of people in your life aren't naturally going to see that. And you might be thinking, yeah, my husband, my kids never help me with anything. Now this is like another level, but if you don't ever communicate it there, that tension can continue to grow. Right. And so, um, yeah. So anyway, um, hopefully that's helpful. Cause I thought, oh, that's an interesting thought in the way of like, wow, I, if you have this love language and you feel like no one is helping you, it can just make you kind of feel isolated and alone. But when you communicate that a lot of times they didn't realize that that was a need of yours. They didn't see that or, and sometimes I, at least I say like, they just people in your life, especially, okay, I'm making a generalization here. It's easy for us to say, oh, my husband never notices or my kids never see and never pick up. You probably have the acts of service as your love language. If you have found yourself saying those words a lot, a lot. Okay. So, um, okay. Okay. Making sure. Okay. 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 And then one more, one more gift giving. Woo. Gift giving. Okay. So the gift giving language is receiving arguably is actually the most misconstructed, okay? To some, it can come across as greedy and the recipient can come across as that they are full of themselves and only think about themselves, but this is not the case, okay? This simply means that this person feels loved with a tangible item. This could be a tiny trinket from the thrift store. It could be a 50 foot sailboat. Um, it doesn't matter. It is the act of a tangible item. It conveys the message. I was thinking about you when I saw this, you're always on my mind. So whether it's picking up their favorite cup of coffee, whether it's bringing home their favorite meal, whether it's, you know, a pair of earrings, whether it's a lipstick shade, that, right? That you think um, someone is going to love. So the true meaning of gift giving isn't extravagance, it's sentiment. It's the thought behind it. So a person with this love language might cherish the gift, however small, more than someone who speaks a different love language, simply because every time they see it, hold it, use it, or touch it, it serves ever as a reminder that they are loved. So let me give you some examples. Sending your 
person flowers, okay? Even if it's not a special occasion, buying their partner favorite snack food, getting their person tickets to go see their favorite musician, getting their person um, a gift certificate to the restaurant they've been wanting to try, having coffee or lunch delivered to that person, leaving a small gift for their person to find when they wake up are all examples of giving, um, gift giving love. So we often speak love languages to our partners in ways we want to receive. Okay. So this is something I also thought was interesting, right? Because if your gift give, if your love language is gift giving, you probably are constantly giving gifts to someone, hoping that someone would take the hint to do the same for you. Okay. However, once again, this is a really good conscious way of making sure that you communicate with said person or verbally affirm the gift and the thought behind it, because a lot of times people think um, the, the person with the gift giving love language, people who don't have that think their gifts are not good enough. Okay. So if you are someone who loves um, giving gifts and that, that brings a lot of sentiment and joy to you, affirm the person or appreciate or however, and tell them it's not the gift that they got you but the thought, and it will allow the people in your life to feel more confident loving you with gifts because they begin to learn that it wasn't the actual item, but the sentiment behind it. Okay, so this encourages the people in your life to feel more confident doing that. Okay, so precautions for the gift love language. Um, like I said, if you're a words of affirmation person and you insult the gift, right? Like you could say, oh, I don't like this or I don't use that. One of the things I've always told my kids, no matter what you get, you always say, thank you. I love this. I don't care if you love it. I don't care if you hate it. Like you affirm the person because, you know, if someone, I think in my opinion, that's just common sense, but you, you may not have grown up that way, right? Like, so it's making sure that you appreciate and affirm or respond to, to that and not, and not downgrade the gift, okay? No matter how ridiculous it might be, okay? How, one year, Christmas, one year Chris, for Christmas, Jordan got a, a jump rope from his grandparents. My husband is 32. Like, Jordan does not jump rope anymore, you guys. Um, and I... I thought it was crazy until his grandpa said, I remember when you were a little boy and you would jump rope at, in our front yard. And I was like, oh my gosh, that gift was a memory for him. So while that was totally not something that Jordan needed or wanted, that meant a lot to him to give to Jordan, right? So therefore not insulting it, even though we all had a good laugh about it, we heard the story and we're like, wow, you know, like there's just so much sentiment behind it. Okay. So though a majority of us are going to have one to two dominant love language, like I said, it is normal if you feel loved in all five ways. So don't freak out if you're hearing all this information, you're like, I don't know. You have to ask yourself, what do I do for people I love? This is probably going to show you really quick what your love language is. And then ask your spouse, when do you feel the most loved by me? What do I do that makes an impact? And so how I wanted to share with you guys two ways that this um, can affect your, your business. I know, we, uh, like I said, there's so much just good information. Um, this can um, affect how you market. This can affect how you build relationships. But the last thing I want to close with, and I know this is a little bit longer than normal, but you guys, I think this is so important. And I was, re I, I was like I said, I was researching, finding all this. Don't be afraid to love on yourself and your own love language. And we are really all about growing our strengths, growing our leadership. And so I thought I would share this with you and I can share it with all of our directors too. But if you are a physical touch person, book yourself a massage, go for a spa day, get soft blankets, move your body. You are probably way more dedicated to our skincare than anybody else, because that's a physical way that you can love yourself. If you are an acts of service person, you probably clean, you probably organize, you have lots of good delegating, 
you enjoy therapy and scheduling and planners. Okay. Um, these things are all things that are going to help you do stuff for yourself that makes your life feel easier and more structured. Receiving gifts. Obviously, going out, vacations, craft supplies, makeup, clothes, investing in yourself, buying gifts for yourself and spending money on things that bring you joy, my friend, is not selfish. Okay. It allows you to build yourself. Words of affirmation. <laughs> These are positive self-talk, daily affirmations, journaling, self-improvement. These all help give you self pep, giving yourself pep talks, encouraging words, and being your best cheerleader. Quality time. You probably meditate. You probably read, art, have hobbies. You um, take yourself out on your own dates. Um, you might be someone who enjoys eating by yourself because that is something you love to do. This is allowing you to spend time alone with things, doing time that things that spend with, sorry, creates a lot of joy and hobbies that you absolutely love doing. So that also might be a good way for you to figure out what are some of those things that you do without needing to be prompted. Okay. So, um, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so I know this is a lot of information, you guys, but like I said, I believe this is a huge way for you to grow. This allows you to um, grow yourself, impact your marriage, impact your children, impact your relationship with your customers, impact your relationship with your team, and ultimately, ultimately release this lie. Sometimes we believe that we're not seen, loved, and heard. You are seen, loved, and heard your person might be doing it in a way in their natural love language, right? And so, like I said, there's so much good information. I pray this is very enlightening to you. Like I said, I learned so much studying and reading this, even had great conversations with Jordan. You can take a test. It's free. It's not very long. Um, and it just allows you to learn more about yourself. So thank you guys for letting me share um, all this information. I cannot wait to hear how this is such a huge blessing for you. And we're excited to learn about your guys' love language. So if you already know what you think yours is, go ahead and comment in the chat. We would love to see. So there you go. Yay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Good job, Maya. Thanks. You guys, this truly is one of the things when, you know, as, as you do learn about yourself, as you do learn, you know, about the different, I mean, there's all kinds of different, you know, we talked about the disc in the five love languages and all of those things. The more that you know, the better you are able to, you know, like Maya said, even at the end, like to take care of yourself and to know that, but to love on the people around you and to know how to support and encourage the people around you, you know, how to communicate with the people around you. Like all of those things are so important in business and in personal relationships. And, you know, this business, like when you have a Mary Kay business, it is all about the harmony of everything together. It's not, you know, a balance of things. It's everything working together. And so all of this so much comes into play with that. And so I just thought this was perfect to be able to know how to, to do all of those things, but also how to apply it to your team, your customers, all of that. So I would just love to open up if anybody would love to share their aha moments or their big takeaways or any of that for, um, or for Maya and also hers is like she said, words of affirmation. So I'm sure she would also just love to know <laughs> <laughs> what, what you loved about this as well. So anybody want to share, hop on here and mute and share. Okay, hold on. Oh, I think Francesca, were you wanting to share a little bit? Okay. All right. So Heidi says in here, Jason and her have used love languages for a while, learned so much. Everybody's yeah. loved this, loved this. Yeah, this was like to a whole new level. It was <laughs> so good, Maya. Like I took so many notes and it was so insightful. But it was also really good for me to, um, it's such a good reminder, even though like I've, I've heard some of these before, but to really 
I be immersed in, I feel like I, tonight we were immersed in this. And um, I was thinking of ways like, oh my gosh, you know, I was just literally having pictures of things that I could do better or things I need to be aware of. Um, you know, because sometimes you're like, oh, I know about that, you know, and you, you just check it off. But really, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I need to be more cognizant of these a little bit more. Um, right. So it was so good, so thorough. You you always just rock it out. So I so appreciate it. So good. And, and hearing your stories, I mean, just made me laugh. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I'll say this to you guys. Isn't Mary Kay so brilliant? Because when you think about our Mary Kay family, she demonstrated love in every avenue, mm -hmm. right? From praise and recognition to gifts, to time, to serving. I mean, yeah. I, the more I read this, I was like, wow, Mary Kay really created a place for everyone to feel loved. Right. Like I just, I was, when I started thinking about all the pieces of our Mary Kay family, like there really is a place for everyone to feel seen, loved and heard. And I'm so thankful for that. And it's so brilliant that anyway, I just, I was really blown away the more that I thought about how our Mary Kay family works. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Anyone else have anything that they would like to say or share? I know there are things in the comments as well. Oh, Jenica just said, I've been trying to implement the love languages, not only for my husband, also my children. It's fun learning how to better serve my family. And I never even thought about it for my business. So thank you. Mm -hmm. yes. Absolutely. It looks like a lot of us on here are acts of service. Like if you're acts of service and that you know you are, like raise your hand. Mm -hmm. There's like several. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, good. Good. Wow. That's crazy. I have to tell you a funny story on Maya. <laughs> so I know Maya's words of affirmation, but um, sometimes I forget because I mean, really, I can see you in all the, of them, like Jordan said. Um, and I always thought you were gift giving because you do so well gift giving. And, um, but it really is acts of service. And I remember, you know, I just wrote a little note to you for a seminar and that night you were like, just treasuring those words. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I should have really been <laughs> concentrating what I wrote because I was just writing a thank you note, but she's like, you know, and that's the mm -hmm. word I was like, I need to be more making sure mm -hmm. I'm more intentional when I'm working with people who are words of affirmation that I'm not just like. You know, I mean, not that I didn't mean those, but they take every word to heart. And I, yeah. I, I witnessed that at mm -hmm. seminar with Maya and I was like, whoa, it's just taken back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Jordan, one of his is gift giving. And I remember at the very beginning of our marriage, you guys, I'd be like, stop spending money like this. Why are you spending money on me? Like, that doesn't make any sense. I just want you to tell me you love me. And it really was a very eye-opening thing because that was his way of saying, I love mm -hmm. you. And, um, and then I told him, I'll say, I, you now have a $50 budget for telling me you love me. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but it, so, you know, sometimes the people in your life make you better at different gift giving, like mm -hmm. our love, love languages, right? Because that is not still to this day, one of my strengths, um, I freak out. I, I, I get so nervous. And so sometimes surrounding yourself with someone who has a different love language than you really does kind of open your eyes to, wow, that, that meant a lot to that person or that was a huge yeah. thing for them. Um, so yeah, but yes, that was really funny. Oh, <laughs> my head's floating. And I think it, I think where this to me comes into play a lot too, is especially whether you I mean, honestly, whether you are new or seasoned in your business, that I think that that's a lot of times where there can be some tension in business is in the home environment. And so to be able to have this to know mm -hmm. that, again, if, you know, if your spouse's love language is quality of time, it doesn't mean that you have to, like Maya said, be there, you know, 24 seven with them, but just to have that intentional time to be with them, to, you know, spend that quality time together with them, then they're going to be okay. That it's like, okay, my cup is filled. Now you can go and do your work. You can go and do the things mm -hmm. because everybody, like everybody is getting what it is that they need mm -hmm. when you know, and you understand that. But if there's all that tension, cause you're trying to do it one way versus how they want it, 
then that can lead to a lot of, of resentment and things like that. And sometimes that gets blamed on the business when it's not the business's fault. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you know, it's put on that because that's the new thing that is taking the place. Like if you're talking about quality time, that is what's taking the quality time's place. Mm -hmm. And so there's resentment for the business. And you have to remember that it's not the business's fault. It's because they're still not getting what they need out of that. So just to kind of keep that in mind mm -hmm. as this, as you look at this in regards to your environment that you're at, like your home and who you're around, because that makes such a key difference in what that looks like as well. So just a reminder on that. Yeah. All right. Any other comments or questions or anything like that? All right, you guys. Well, thank you so much. Oh, does somebody? Yeah, I was just going to say, like, it was really good for me to be reminded of, like, the things that really matter because, like, I'm single and I live by myself and so I don't see um, my family a lot. And um, during COVID, it's kind of been secluded. And it was just nice to um, be reminded how we need to think about the people around us more. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Elizabeth. You're welcome. Awesome. All right. Anyone else? All right, you guys. Well, as we announced earlier, our next All In Family Night is going to be the first Monday of October. So I think that is, let me double check here, October 3rd. So make sure you mark your calendars for that to join us for the next one. And again, thank you guys so much for just taking the time out of your evening tonight to be with us over your holiday weekend. And we will have the recording of this so that you can go back and listen again, share with your family members, share with anybody that you think it can benefit as well. And we will see you guys next time. So thank you guys again. Have an awesome night. Bye. And we'll see you next time.